men manage money better than themselves, that's why Wall Street and prisons are filled with men. <laughs> and that if you can manage your ego, most crimes are committed by men. If you can manage your ego and yourself, you'll be fine. Steph Curry, the story is, uh, is the fourth highest paid warrior. He will get a new contract. That won't last forever. I truly believe his ability to manage himself is right now beyond his shooting his greatest asset, that it would eat other players alive. But Steph's ability to say, because he has a quote here, he goes, my pops always told me, never count another man's money. It's what you got and how you take care of it. And I'm, if I'm complaining about 44 mil over four years, <laughs> I've got other issues in my life. Do you, I don't think it bothers him, do you? No, I, I think he's totally fine with it. I think he was being very honest there. And that's a person who's self-contained and secure in themselves. Because it's one thing if he were making, you know, $100,000 a year or struggling. He's making plenty of money. He Just like he said, he's not worried about what other guys are making. He understands when he signed that $44 million deal, he was coming off of ankle injuries. He wasn't this caliber of player. And the other guys his teammates have signed since then with a new salary cap. You know, he's he's smart. He understands they're not making more because – the franchise values them more than me. They're making more because of the situation. My turn will come this summer, and he'll get paid. Remember, it also shows you that Steph is about the right things. Basketball, he's about his job, taking care of business, and winning. Michael Jordan was never the highest paid player on the Bulls until his last two years. Think about that. All that come fly with me, those videos and those MVPs and that first three-peat. And all, he was never the highest paid player. You didn't hear a peep out of him. And that's – I love that. Look, more NBA players and athletes in general will be better off if they made decisions – based not just on the money, but what's the best situation for Listen, them. I've said for years on this show, I told you, Christine, don't chase money, chase good management. There's a sea of money. There's not many great managers. If you were at the Akron Beacon Journal or New York Times where you worked, and you were the fourth highest paid sports writer, let's, let's just say, here's the world. You are probably first or second best sports writer. You're paid as the fourth. The good news, though, they don't demand that you write four columns a week. They're like, Chris, do two. So when you drive to work like Steph Curry, Steph Curry had a game this year. He scored eight, and they won by 13. <laughs> so Steph drives to the arena knowing if I sacrifice some cabbage, it's a better life. Westbrook's miserable when not to the All-Star break. Would you take a deal if you were the fourth highest paid sports writer, but it was a better life and you were still well compensated? As long as I felt it was fair. You know, I, you don't want to be taken advantage that's of. Right. But if they're paying you something that's fair, I, I don't care what so and so is making as long as what I'm getting is fair what, for think what about I'm what doing. Think about what Carmelo did. He's in Denver. He demands a trade, so the yeah. Knicks have to give up assets to get him. If Carmelo would have just unselfishly said, "I'm going to stay in Denver till the deal's done," not forced. That's the Knicks. right. You would have had all those players with you. But again, Carmelo lacks that self awareness to go. Let's just, I'll just stick it out for six months yeah. and I'll go to the Knicks. And by the way, that way the Knicks don't have to trade pieces to yeah. get me. So I end up in New York, they have no players. One of the best examples of this in, in recent NBA history, Stephon Marbury. Now you remember he was in Minnesota with Kevin Garnett. Yeah. Everybody thought they'd be the next Stockton and Malone. Right. Garnett was the highest paid player on that team. Marbury wanted – he felt like, look, I'm. we got to oh. the playoffs when I got here. I should be the highest paid player. Ego. Now, beyond that pettiness, okay, when Marbury was finally able to sign his big deal with Minnesota, it was after a new collective bargaining agreement when they put in the max contracts. So he couldn't make as much as Garnett because Garnett had signed before the new CBA. But even that still didn't – allow Marbury to just be like, okay, I can handle being second best pay. So he forced his way out to New Jersey in a trade. I was covering the Nets at the time, and the rest is history. Now, watching Marbury's career, I think something would have happened where him and Garnett probably would have but, but, but gone different Marbury, ways anyway. Marbury, Derrick Rose, Carmelo lack a certain self-awareness. Their careers are not as great as they should be. No. Okay, Although, for their talent. Melo will be – I think you're a little hard on Melo. He'll be a Hall of Famer. Okay, great. I think first ballot Hall of Famer. And, no. look, when he got to Denver, 
They went from 17 wins to the playoffs yeah, everybody, in the West. Yeah, how many years ago was that? But it, it, it was his first year. And, like, and, and don't forget college. You saw the commercial, okay. Oh, okay. Syracuse. Right. And by the way, I got, I, got a, <laughs> I got an A in biology in the eighth grade. I'm not still patting myself on the And a couple years ago, 54 oh, wins, God, second God. round of the playoffs. Oh, God, Bruce I'm Sars. just saying, like, you're killing him like, like he's always in the lottery. Well, congrats, Carmelo, on that A in biology in eighth grade. It's You're worse than those guys in the Foot Locker commercial. <laughs> <laughs>